Hi guys, today is uh, Monday, August 17th, and uh, futures are pointing to higher open as uh, lawmakers are still uh, struggling to come up uh, with the consensus on the uh, $1 trillion package to help the uh, American economy. But the daily new cases uh, uh, for the virus has dropped, and uh, that's the lowest level since, uh, I believe, in July. So uh, market is uh, optimistic and uh, futures are going to higher open. So let's jump to SPY, S uh, ETF or S&P 500. And uh, I still have this uh, resistance lines and uh, support lines. And uh, it broke out uh, to me, uh, the SPY, out of this resistance. Uh, and uh, I think it's going to take on uh, this uh, latest 339 um, uh, all-time high, I believe, uh, that was set in, back in February. So I think the stock market is going higher no matter what, because there is a lot of liquidity out there and uh, people are still optimistic about the reopening of the economy. And um, uh, things are looking good so far, but we'll see what happens because this is the expiration week, the uh, monthly expiration uh, this week, and uh, it will be probably increased volatility <coughs> this week. So let's jump to stocks. And uh, before we do that, uh, if you want to see my trades or my portfolio, you can check out the Patreon link in the description of uh, this video. Okay, let's start with uh, AMAT. Applied Materials, uh, they reported earnings uh, last week and they reported a beat by 11 cents and revenue also beat and uh, gave uh, an upbeat uh, guidance for the current quarter and uh, amid the rebounding uh, of the demand. And uh, it's a semiconductor manufacturing equipment company. It's uh, one of my favorite companies and uh, I'm holding shares. And uh, um, I think uh, actually it's uh, it's trading a little bit uh, out of uh, its range, but uh, not surprisingly so because uh, they reported pretty good results, but closer to like $65. If somehow there will be a sell off, I would be again a buyer of uh, applied materials, AMAT. Okay, Baidu. Baidu is a Chinese search engine company and uh, they reported really good earnings actually. Beat estimates on top and bottom raised the buyback plan to 3 billion from 1 billion. However, shares were under pressure because uh, um, after SAC started the uh, Security 6 and the Exchange Commission started the investigation of its uh, uh, of the uh, IQE, IQ stock symbol. Uh, that's uh, pretty much a Netflix of China, and uh, Baidu holds uh, majority of the shares in uh, IQE. And uh, I don't know if I pronounce it right, but uh, the stock symbol is IQ. Okay, so um, it, that company actually spinned off uh, of uh, Baidu uh, a while ago, and uh, the charges were. Uh, the uh, of fraud was brought up by a short seller called the Wolfpack, Wolfpack Research, and uh, they did a, a paper on them, and uh, they have uh, discovered that uh, this company was uh, hiding uh, like revenue and uh, expenses and uh, boostings uh, like uh, profits. Uh, so who knows? Uh, I mean, it looks like uh, Baidu shares are pressured by this. Uh, uh, investigation and uh, uh, in my opinion, uh, I mean, if it goes uh, like into a hundred ten dollars, uh, it could be a pretty good buy for Baidu because I think uh, uh, Baidu is trading pretty low in my opinion in this uh, range. Okay, see back. Kuro back. That's a new company uh, that's uh, been uh, IPO'd on Friday, I believe, and uh, began trading on Nasdaq at the uh, IPO sh uh, stock price of $16. And as you can see right now, uh, it closed on Friday at $55.90, so more, more than tripled. Uh, that's a company that's, uh, that's a German company that's providing, uh, uh, using uh, mRNA technology to develop COVID vaccine and uh, shares are opening a lot higher. So I would be very careful with this company, CVAC. Uh, at these levels. I mean, uh, all I can think of to short this, uh, I mean, uh, the IPO was uh, at $16. Right now it's trading uh, pre-market at $80. I would be very, very careful with this company. I would not buy this. So be careful with this one. Okay, DKNG. Uh, DraftKings. DraftKings reported uh, actually uh, earnings, uh, a loss wider than expected, revenue and forecast uh, were better than expected and results were very strong considering a limited um, sports calendar and uh, 
It's an online sports betting company, uh, DraftKings, and uh, obviously benefits uh, from the sports and uh, business uh, uh, economy reop- reopens and uh, people uh, watching sports. But uh, in general, I was encouraged by the results. Actually, I, I bought shares uh, on Friday and uh, I think the shares could go higher uh, from here. And uh, actually, uh, the stock was pressured by the news that uh, uh, revenue department uh, uh, internal revenue department is uh, charging uh, sports betting companies uh, a certain percentage of uh, betting and they're gonna uh, uh, dispute that obviously uh, and um, I mean to me DKNG is trading uh, in the range that can be bought okay Tesla okay Tesla uh, was upgraded actually not upgraded but the uh, prices uh, Price target raised by Wetbush to 1900 from 1800 as China demand accelerated, and uh, uh, the Wetbush also maintained the usual rating on Tesla. And, uh, obviously, you know that uh, Tesla is going to be uh, doing a stock split, a one to five, I believe, uh, stock split uh, in the coming days. And uh, I mean, to me, its shares are going actually higher. I mean, the, the chart looks actually pretty good on Tesla, and uh, to me, its shares are going higher. So what can I say? Tesla is a buy. Okay, Citigroup. Okay, Citigroup mistakenly paid nine hundred million dollars to lenders. Oh my God, the two lenders of cosmetic maker Revlon. Lenders uh, has uh, of this uh, cosmetic maker sued Revlon over its uh, uh, debt restructuring tactics, and uh, were actually surprised to find out that uh, their loan with the interest was uh, completely paid back, fully uh, paid back. And um, I mean, Citigroup was uh, the agent for this uh, 2016 loan agreement, in 2016 loan agreement, but uh, <laughs> now Citigroup was, uh, wants its money back from the lenders. I don't know what's gonna happen, but $900 million mistake, <laughs> that's a little harsh, I don't know. So I would, I don't know, I would not be feeling very comfortable about as I, as I am, uh, if I was a Citigroup shareholder. I would rather be a Bank of America shareholder, so choose rather than Citigroup right now. Okay, so I would just uh, stay on the sidelines for this one. FTCH. Okay, Farfetch, Fairfetch, not Farfetch. I'm sorry. Uh, so online luxury fashion retailers uh, reported smaller than expected loss revenue uh, beat but also said that pandemic related uncertainties could impact performance and uh, uh, actually uh, I mean it's trading in an interesting range I would uh, not buy it here because it's a little bit overbought I would uh, rather have a drop to closer to $25 to, to buy it um, so I would wait on this one FTCH MYGN, <clears throat> Myriad Genetics. Uh, so Myriad Gen- Genetics is uh, it's a genetic, it's a molecular diagnostic company that uh, allows doctors to understand the genetic basis of the disease. Uh, reported small uh, small loss, of revenue slightly below uh, analyst estimates, but uh, uh, said that the volume of testing increased seventy five percent since the beginning of the year and. Uh, I mean, shares dropped on the report, but I think it could be an interesting uh, spec buy to me in this area, like a twelve-dollar area. Um, uh, the shares may go actually higher after the, after the economy reop- reopens. Dillard's. <coughs> so Dillard's is a department store chain uh, operator. They reported much smaller loss, uh, revenue below though. Uh, said inventory and cost cutting measures helped. Uh, to uh, boost profits and uh, create uh, bigger mar- margins. So Dillard's also is an interesting buy to me, actually. It's pretty, uh, it's trading pretty low. I remember this company was trading in the hundreds of dollars a few years few years ago, and uh, I think at $29, it could be a pretty good buy to me. DDS, S-N-Y, that's uh, Sanofi. Sanofi reported that it's buying U.S. biotech uh, company Principia Bio, uh, Biopharma, uh, stock symbol PRNB, okay, for a hundred dollars, and uh, that's uh, four hundred dollars per share in cash, or around uh, three point seven billion. 
Uh, this will strengthen uh, SNY presence in autoimmune or uh, and allergy related uh, diseases. Actually, a pretty good uh, move for SNY, actually, in my opinion. And uh, SNY shares could be an interesting buy in this area, like $50 area uh, or like under $50. That would be a good buy for, to me. MBOT. Microbot Medical. So this company, uh, it's, uh, uh, the shares are trading higher after the company announced its animal study utilizing its uh, Liberty robotic system met all endpoints. And uh, you have to be careful with this one because uh, only a couple of days ago it was trading around $6. So now it's trading around $12. So shares are pretty much uh, doubled. And uh, even, even though uh, they reported good numbers and uh, the shares came up a lot, uh, before and I would be careful buying this at the open. I would rather um, open it, uh, go higher and drop it, and then like under ten dollars, like closer to nine dollars, I would be interested in this in the shares. Not before that. M B O T and V A X Novavax. So uh, Novavax uh, uh, beginning a mid-stage study of its experimental vaccine in South Africa, which has seen a recent surge of uh, the virus. And uh, uh, to me, it's trading a little bit too high, like $150. I would like it to drop uh, closer to like $120 uh, before I buy it. NVAX. Okay, Teladoc. Teladoc, it's, uh, um, it's an interesting company, it was upgraded to outperform from uh, neutral by Credit Suisse, which points to a number of uh, positive factors, including recent acquisition of uh, Levango Health. Um, this company dropped a lot. Uh, I mean, it was trading like around uh, $250 and it dropped like uh, to $187. And right now it's trading pretty much at 193 I think uh, it could be an interesting buy to me. I think it dropped too much and... Uh, shares uh, could be bought in here like in this $190 area and uh, the last one I'll give you is BKR, BRKB Berkshire Hathaway okay so it was uh, discovered that uh, Berkshire added a stake worth of 562 million in Berry Gold stock symbol G-O-L-D okay so Berry Gold um, uh, shares are higher because uh, of this uh, revealing of the stake and uh, sell the shoes. I mean, uh, Barry Gold is up like 45% uh, year to date. And uh, Warren Buffett uh, buying Barry Gold at the top, I don't know. I mean, to me, he lost a step a little bit. And I like Warren Buffett, and uh, I could be criticized for saying that, but uh, to me, he lost a step a little bit. And uh, he also cut uh, his stakes in banks and uh, like Wells Fargo and uh, Bank of America and uh, completely exited Goldman Sachs uh, stake. I don't know if this is a good move or not. The future will tell. But uh, BRKB, I would hold off on buying BRKB. I would rather be in S&P 500 than uh, than in this uh, stock. Okay, that's it, guys. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click the like button. And I'll see you Thursday.